hello everyone welcome back to my channel in this video i'll be explaining you an important concept called uh, box compounds uh, generally the raw materials which are used for the manufacture of cement will consist of lime silica alumina and iron oxide and uh, these oxides will interact with one another in the rotary clin at very high temperatures uh, that's near the clinkering zone to form complex compounds the relative proportions of these oxide compositions is responsible for influencing the various properties of cement in addition to rate of cooling and fineness of grinding. The identification of the major compounds is generally uh, based on R.H. Bogue's work and hence these compounds are called Bogue's compound. Okay, and we have four Bogue's compounds which are listed in the tabular column we have tricalcium silicate dicalcium silicate tricalcium aluminate and tetracalcium aluminoferrite so tricalcium silicate is denoted by c3s dicalcium silicate by c2s tricalcium aluminate by c3a and tetracalcium aluminoferrite by c4af and it is to be noted that for simplicity we are uh, writing the abbreviated notations means C stands for CaO, S stands for SiO2, A stands for Al2O3 and F stands for Fe2O3. Later on when we go to hydration we write H where H stands for H2O. That's why if you see tricalcium silicate it is written as C3S. So C3 means it is three times CaO and one S which is SiO2. So you can see that's how all the abbreviations are given for the Bogues compounds. So as told uh, in the calcination zone in the manufacturing of cement, uh, calcium carbonate will decompose into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide where carbon dioxide will be sent out and in the clinkering zone as just now I was telling the oxides fuse together to form Bogues compounds. So these are the chemical reactions and you can see the four Bogues compounds which are formed. Coming to the properties of these Bogues compounds, uh, let's get into the first Bogue compound which is C3S which is tricalcium silicate and of all the four Bogue compounds tricalcium silicate is the most abundant. It is generally more than 50% of the total compounds present. This Bogues compound is responsible for early strength means the first seven days of strength is due to C3S hydration. This compound produces more heat of hydration. A cement with more C3S is better for cold weather concreting. The next bulk compound is C2S. So C2S is the second most abundant compound in Portland cement. In typical Portland cement, C2S will be in between 25 to 30 percent. The hydration of C2S will start after seven days means for seven days uh, hydration is of C3S so after C3S completes its hydration next starts C2S hence uh, the strength whichever is attributed by C2S will be after seven days C2S hydrates and hardens slowly and provides much of the ultimate strength it is responsible for later strength of concrete and it produces less heat of hydration Next we have C3A which is called tricalcium aluminate. This plays a major role in the characteristics of fresh concrete. The reaction of C3A with water is very very fast. That's the reason uh, we are adding gypsum to prevent the flash setting. So flash setting or flash set means the immediate stiffening of cement paste. Why? Which occurs due to the reaction of C3A and water. Hence, to prevent this flash set, we are adding gypsum by weight of around 2 to 3 percent at the time of grinding the cement clinkers. Uh, the hydrate C3A do, of C3A generally do not contribute to any strength, but the hydrate of C3A is responsible for binding all the particles together, all the ingredients of the concrete together. And the percentage of C3A is around 10 percent in ordinary Portland cement. Next we have the last Bogue compound which is C4AF so it is tetracalcium aluminoferrite and this compound hydrates rapidly but contributes to little strength. 
sometimes no strength also uh, but one has to remember that this uh, box compound has a significant effect on concrete why because it influences the color of the concrete higher concentration of this uh, box compound which is our c4af will result in darker color of concrete and uh, the hydrate of c4af will uh, show a comparatively high resistance to sulfate attack than the hydrates of c3a so if one is going for a construction near seas or where uh, the sulfate uh, where the concrete is vulnerable to sulfate attacks then one can use a cement which is having good amount of C4AF but uh, in an ordinary Portland cement the percentage of C4AF is around 10 percentage so how to calculate the box compounds if the oxide composition in cement is known like lime uh, silica alumina iron oxide whatever we have discussed in the chemical composition of cement if the oxide composition is given to you you can easily determine the percentage of box compounds in the cement by the following formulae. So C3S, C2S, C3 and C4F are given by the respective formulae. Once you know the oxide compositions as a group, you can just substitute and get the values of the percentages of box compounds. So hope you understood this video. Thank you so much for watching.